Hi guys, here's your lesson on 13.3 trig functions of general angles. Um, what we're doing with this is we are taking all of the stuff we did with right triangle trig for uh, Sokotoa and we are applying it to general angles on the coordinate plane which we dealt with yesterday. So if I have a point XY and I choose to plot that point XY, what's going to happen is you're going to create a triangle because I'm moving X units on my X axis and then I'm moving Y units up to get that point. So as you can see, you have a right triangle. What you can do with this is you can create your six trig functions based upon the sides of this right triangle. So we have our side X, our side Y. The R is just the hypotenuse, which you can calculate using this, which is just the Pythagorean theorem. Um, sine of theta is going to be your opposite over your hypotenuse, so it's Y over R. Cosine is your adjacent over the hypotenuse. And by the way, we're going off of this angle down here. And tangent is going to be your opposite over adjacent, so y over x. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. So once you have these three, um, you can go ahead and figure out cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So the first thing you want to do to get a feel for where your triangle is is to actually plot the point or sketch out where it would be. So 8, negative 15 is somewhere in the fourth quadrant. So I would have to move over 8 units to the right, move down 15 units, and then you're going to have this triangle over here with theta being right in there. This angle is actually called your reference angle, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. Um, to figure out your hypotenuse, to figure out R, you're just working with the Pythagorean theorem. So it's a squared plus, or x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Make sure you put that negative 15 in parentheses if you're using a calculator, not 8. Um, so you end up with r equals 17 once you actually work through it. And then now that you have all three sides, you can set up your trig ratios. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's negative 15 over 17. And that's the same thing as y over r. Cosecant is a reciprocal of that, so that's going to be negative 17 over 15. Cosine is your adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's 8 over 17, which is equivalent to x over r. Secant is going to be the reciprocal of that. Tangent is the same thing as opposite over hypo sorry, opposite over adjacent. So that's negative 15 over 8. Um, and then that's the same thing as y over x. So cotangent is a reciprocal of that, so negative 8 over 15. And those are your six trig ratios represented by this point, 8, negative 15. For letter B, 4, 4 root 3 is in the first quadrant, so I'm moving over 4 units and then I am moving up for root 3 units and it gives you that triangle. Um, to figure out R, you're just working with the Pythagorean theorem. So I have 4 squared, my x squared plus my y squared and taking the square roots. Be careful when you're plugging this into the calculator, make sure you put 4 root 3 in parentheses, um, but your R ends up being 8. So sine is my y over r, so that's 4 root 3 over 8, which reduces to root 3 over 2. Cosine is my x over my r, so that's 4 over 8, which is 1 half. Tangent is y over x, so I have 4 root 3 over 4, which reduces to root 3. Cosecant, I'm going to go ahead and take my sine and uh, flip it over for the reciprocal. You can't have radicals in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply this by root 3 over root 3. And that gives me 2 root 3 over 3 for cosecant. Secant, just taking the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. And then cotangent, the reciprocal of root 3 is 1 over root 3. So that I can change to root 3 over 3 by doing the same thing I did up here. For this last one, my point when I plot it just so happens to be at the negative y-axis. So we don't really have a triangle necessarily to work with, um, but we still can figure out your six trig functions because here's your x, your y, and then r is just the square root of x squared plus 
plus y squared, which is going to be 4, which you can tell by looking at this because this was 4 units. Sine is the same thing as y over r, so I have negative 4 over 4, which reduces to negative 1. Cosine is the same thing as x over r, so I have 0 over 4, which reduces to 0. Tangent is the same thing as y over x, so you have negative 4 over 0. Now you can never divide by 0, so tangent is undefined. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that's negative 1. If I take the reciprocal of 0, that means I'm dividing by 0, which you can't do. So that is undefined. And for cotangent, if I were to flip over my original ratio for tangent, that would give me 0 over negative 4, which is just 0. So if one trig function is 0, its reciprocal trig function is undefined and vice versa. For this next example, we're doing very similar things to the previous example, um, except I'm not giving you a point. Instead, I'm giving you one ratio and the quadrant that we're in. Well, we know that tangent is negative 12 fifths, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that part in. Since tangent is negative 12 fifths, cotangent is negative 5 twelfths. And it tells me that I am in my fourth quadrant, so I'm going to go ahead and sketch my triangle in my fourth quadrant. And there's my theta. Well, tangent is the same thing as y over x, or opposite over the adjacent. So my y is 12, and my x is 5. Now, if you notice, one of these is going to have to be negative because you have a negative 12 fifths. Well, since we're in the fourth quadrant, our x is positive and our y is negative. And using the Pythagorean theorem, your hypotenuse ends up being 13. And then from there, you can set up all of your other ratios. So sine is uh, y over r, so negative 12 over 13. Cosine is x over r, so 5 over 13. Cosecant and secants are just going to be reciprocals. So negative 13 over 12 and uh, 13 over 5. For letter B, I'm in my third quadrant. There's my theta. Sine is y over r. So my y is 2, r is 3. Now I have to figure out which one's going to be negative. Well, in my third quadrant, your x is negative, and so is your y. So the 2 has to be negative. And by the way, your hypotenuse r will never be negative, because you're using the Pythagorean theorem to get it. And that always results in a positive value. Um, continuing with the Pythagorean theorem to figure out your x, I have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That gives me x squared plus 4 equals 9. So x is going to equal the square root of 5. Now pay extra close attention because we are in the third quadrant, which means your x values in the third quadrant are negative. So we need to make a conscious change of making that a negative. We already had sign that was given to us, so that's negative two-thirds, so cosecant is negative three-halves. Cosine is x over r, so that's negative root five over three. Tangent is y over x, so that's negative two over negative root five, which becomes positive two over root five. And of course, you can't have radicals in the denominator, so that becomes two root five over five. Secant, when I flip this over, that's going to be negative 3 root 5 over 5. And then cotangent, I would recommend flipping over your original ratio. That way you don't have to worry about the radical. And that becomes root 5 over 2. The last thing we are looking at are reference angle. A reference angle is an acute angle, so it's less than 90 degrees. Um, with the terminal side of your angle along the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an angle in each quadrant. So there's an angle in my first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. So this right here is theta. This going around is theta. That is going to be theta. And then going all the way around and stopping right here, is your original angle theta. Your reference angle is an acute angle formed with the x-axis. So this right here is your reference angle along the x-axis. 
reference angle. Along the x-axis, reference angle, and then going along the x-axis. So one of the sides has to be the x-axis. There's your reference angle. If you are in the first quadrant, your reference angle just so happens to be your original angle because both of them are acute. If you are in the second quadrant and I'm trying to figure out the measure of this little wedge, what I'm doing is I'm taking 180 degrees because you're in two quadrants and subtracting my original angle theta. Similarly, if we're in radians, 180 degrees is equivalent to pi, so it would be pi minus the original angle theta in radians. If I'm in my third quadrant and I'm trying to find this wedge here, I need to eliminate these two quadrants, which means I need to subtract 180 degrees from my original angle theta. Similarly, in radians, I would subtract pi. And then finally, if I'm in the fourth quadrant and I know the measure of this angle theta going all the way around, I want to figure out how much is left over until 360. I would take 360 degrees minus my original angle theta. And similarly, in radians, that would be 2 pi minus my original angle theta in radians. So it's very helpful when you're doing reference angles to actually sketch it out. That way you can see what quadrant you're in and um, figure out the reference angle accordingly. All right, so 330 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and sketch that. That is in my fourth quadrant. And I know going all the way around to here is 330 degrees. So this wedge is my reference angle. Well, if I know a full rotation is 360, I can take my 360 minus my 330. So my reference angle for this first one is going to be 30 degrees. For 11 pi over 6, um, some people don't know what quadrant that's in because it's in radian. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this to degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi and that's going to give me 330 degrees again. So we're still in the fourth quadrant. We know that is 11 pi over 6 or 330 and we've already figured out our reference angle from there. So our reference angle for this is also 300 or not it's also 30 degrees. Since we started with radians you need to make sure you change that back to radians. So I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180. So your reference angle for this is going to be pi over 6. Or if you wanted to deal with the radians right away, it would be 2 pi, just like you did 360, minus 11 pi over 6, which is the same thing as 1 pi over 6. A half of a rotation is pi radians, just like it's 180 degrees, so that means if I'm at 3 pi over 4, so at 3 fourths, I'm going to be in my second quadrant. So I know that is 3 pi over 4. And my reference angle, I forgot to label this one, my reference angle is over here, and since I'm in the second quadrant, I want to take 180 degrees, which is the same thing as pi radians, minus my original angle theta. So my reference angle for this is going to be pi over 4. And then finally, for negative 225, I'm actually going to find a positive coterminal angle. So I'm taking negative 225 and adding a full rotation, so I'm adding 360 degrees, and that's equivalent to 135 degrees. So 135 degrees is in my second quadrant once again. So I know this over here is 135 degrees, which puts my reference angle right here, because your reference angle is always against the x-axis. So to figure out my reference angle, I'm gonna take 180 degrees minus 135 degrees, so my reference angle is 45 degrees. By the way, if you were to change 3 pi over 4, 
two um, degrees, it would have ended up being 135 degrees. All right, so that completes your lesson for 13.3 trig functions of general angles.